Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Evelyn Lele, and today we'll be looking at the e-commerce solution for local government. So in case you have any questions or comments in the course of this presentation, our team is on standby. They will be able to respond to any questions or comments in the course of this uh, presentation. So make use of the chat section and they'll be able to respond to you. So today we are looking at the e-commerce solution for local government. E-commerce is integrated resource and revenue management uh, system. And we are taking uh, an integrated approach to providing a solution for local governments. So by local governments, we're talking about the county governments in Kenya. We're talking about the local authorities in Uganda and Tanzania. And then we're also talking about the municipalities and, um, and federal states. So it's integrated in that we are looking at having a solution that brings together all the departments of the local government on board. And then this solution will also be linked to the existing system and workflows within the, the local government. So that's why we have the integrated resource and revenue management system for, for local government. So this solution that we are calling e-commerce integrated county resource and revenue management system is based on the ARC GIS platform. For those of us who may be new to this platform, the ArcGIS platform is a platform for managing and applying geographic information. And this platform allows um, for sharing and collaboration across your organization, if you're a county, if you're a municipality, if you're a local authority. And this platform has various components. So we have various applications within the ArcGIS platform. So at the center here, what you're seeing, if you're, if you're using ArcGIS Online, this is ArcGIS Online. And then if you're using enterprise, this is the enterprise portal. So there are two ways of actually deploying this solution. You can deploy it on premise that is using enterprise and have an enterprise portal, or you can deploy it on the cloud and work with ArcGIS Online, or you can actually have a hybrid of both um, uh, cloud-based and premise um, uh, deployment of this solution. So we have various application. We have the desktop applications, a good example would be ArcGIS Pro or ArcMap for those who've used that. Uh, so various professionals can be able to author content from the desktop application and have that published to the portal or ArcGIS Online. And then um, information from ArcGIS Online can be used to create various application we can, which can be used for executive uh, access, mainly for decision making. Or if you need to en engage members of the public and other stakeholders, that is also possible. And the beauty with this platform also is that you can be able to work anywhere at any time. And then, of course, um, the integration with enterprise, which I have talked about. So what we are going to look at today, the e-commerce solution is based on, on this platform. So I'm going to take some time to just explain the solution architecture of this solution that we are offering to local governments. So this is the solution architecture for, for the e-commerce solution that we are offering to local government. So again, um, at the center, we have the portal, if you're working with enterprise or ArcGIS Online. Then we have um, information published to the portal from your county database, or if it's a municipality or local authority, that information has to come from uh, a database within, within your organization. Then uh, this solution is organized in in the form of modules. So we have different modules, and these modules are mainly uh, reflecting the workflows that we have within, within the various uh, local governments or municipalities. So for instance, we have the land information uh, system module. So this information will be gotten from an existing database already within the, within the local government, if it's a county. And that information is published by the lands database admin. So we have the land information module. So this will mainly have all the details of your land parcel, parcels as a local government. Then we have the revenue management module. Revenue is a very important aspect, especially for local governments. So there is need to ensure that our local governments have their own uh, own source revenue. So we have this module also. So this will be linked. The land parcels will be linked to your financial uh, financial systems database. And then we have the e-planning module. So we are looking at uh, mainly the functions of the planning departments within the Ministry of Lands. So um, we want to have all the plans and uh, 
all the plans in digital format and actually have an e-permitting platform for smooth operations within within the local government. We have the health services management module. I think this is a really important module given that we've um, we've all been affected by COVID in one way or the other. So the health services module will have all the information about the the health um, the health centers. Um, resource inventory and so on and so forth so we have that module then we have other modules we have education module we have project management module so we have very many other modules and the beauty with this is that uh, the modules can be um, deployed based on what a local government wants so if you need if you feel like there's a module that we haven't included and you feel that that should be part of what you should have as a local government then that can also be included and then in terms of um, accessing who are accessing this information we have the technical users within the local government we have the physical planners we have the surveyors we have the JS professionals so they can be able to edit information here and um, edit and share this information then this information can also be accessed by executive uh, members of the local government, mainly for decision making. Then in case you need to share this information with members of the public, mainly for public access, that's also possible. Then uh, up here we have um, um, ways in which you can be able to access the various modules and applications. So we have um, desktop application, so you can be able to access uh, information from your desktop application if you're using ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro it, or any of the desktop applications that we have within the platform. Then you can also be able to access this information on the web and also on mobile devices. So I needed to take some time just to explain how the solution architecture works. Then we can now delve into the specific modules that we have within uh, the e-commerce the e-commerce solution. So the first module is the population information module. Of course, population is really important for any local government since services are provided for these people. So they need to know the population that you're dealing with, the total population and uh, how that population is actually distributed across um, the different uh, administrative units, sub-county, ward level, and all that. Then uh, there's also a need to understand the demographics of the demographics of the population, so um, maybe the poverty rates, the population density. So this is important when you are actually uh, allocating resources. You know what population needs what. So this information is actually very important. Then we have the natural resources module. Of course, it's important for a local government to be able to know their resource base, to be able to know spatially where are our resources located, where are the forests, where are the dams, where are the lakes, where are the reservoirs, and so on and so forth. And then, of course, also uh, identifying potential areas for investment. You want to know which are the resources that we have not maximally utilized and which are the resources that we need to utilize more as a local government. So this is really important, understanding the resource base. And then the other aspect will be looking at um, environmental hotspots, which are the resources that are you know, endangered that we need to conserve and so on and so forth. So this information is actually very important for, for our local government, looking at which are the encroached uh, areas or reserves that have, been, uh, that have been encroached. So we also have uh, the natural resources module. And then we have now the land information module. Everything happens on land. Talk of, um, I mean, everything happens on land. So there's need to actually have information on on your land parcels. You can have information on all the registered parcels within within your your local government. Information about the unregistered parcels, and then maybe the different categories of of land depending on ownership uh, ownership rights community land and so on and so forth so this information module will have all the land parcels and their attribute information like the size of that land the value of that land and of course for the value of the land we'll be linking it to the to the valuation role that you have as a local government the land use of that particular land then we can also have the ownership details like this these are this is the lr number this is the name of the owner and these are the details this is how the land parcels have been subdivided over time and so on and so forth. So we have the land information management module. We'll be looking at all these as we go into the demonstration in a few minutes. Then we have the e-planning module. So we're looking at the uh, the functions of the planning departments within the counties. 
and I'm aware that um, for local governments, most of the work is actually done, uh, most of the work like plan preparation is done by consultants. Like if you were to do a special plan or a municipal or city or town plan, this is done by consultants. And usually most of the time the deliverables are hard copy, hard copy outputs. So we are looking at having, uh, part of the solution is to ensure that um, all these uh, plans that have been prepared are actually availed in soft copies such that they can be uploaded to the portal and can actually be accessed at any time. Updates can be done at any 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 time. So we're looking at having digital uh, forms of the different plans that we have within within the local governments, especially the special plans, the PDPs, the municipal plans. All these can be. It's actually possible to have these in digital digital format. And then uh, we are looking at having a seamless EPA meeting uh, process for development control. I'm aware that there are counties that are already having an EPA meeting, um, an EPA meeting platform. I'm aware of Nairobi, Kiambu, Kisumu, and Mombasa. And I think there are also county governments in Kenya that are in the process of doing that. I think Kajiado and Machakos fall among the categories of those that are in the process of implementing. So we'll, we're looking at having um, a seamless e-permitting uh, process for development control. And then uh, you can be able to do the other planning uh, works, maybe have uh, different maps and applications on change detection, land use zones, and so on and so forth. We'll look at this shortly in the demonstration. Then we have the revenue management module. Of course, uh, with devolution and with the decentralized levels of governance, so there's need for local governments, if they're counties or municipalities or local authorities, to be able to generate their own source, uh, their own source revenue or own source income, so that uh, they can reduce dependence on the national government and they can actually run most of their activities and programs on their own. So of course, the the local governments have have various sources of um, of revenue. We have land rates being one of the main sources of revenue. We have business permits. We have parking fees and so on and so forth. So this solution will enable uh, local governments to actually collect and manage uh, revenue. Uh, from the different people within their uh, local government. So we have the revenue management module. We'll also look at the demo uh, briefly. Then we have the project management module. Of course, we are aware that local governments are engaged in different uh, projects uh, uh, and projects can be done by the local government or by the different development partners. So it's actually important to be able to see spatially where we have the different types of projects that are being carried out within, uh, within the local government. Then of course uh, we have different uh, uh, project types of projects, like we have short-term projects, medium-term projects, long-term projects. So it's good to actually be able to see if, for example, we have a short-term project. Are we operating within within the timelines that you have? So you can actually be able to monitor to monitor uh, the progress of that particular project. Then the other aspect will be in terms of allocation of funds to the different uh, projects. So we want to be able to see in this financial year we allocated this amount of money to this particular project. So you can actually be able to see how much has been allocated to different projects at different uh, at different times. We're going to look at this also in the demonstration. Then we have the education services module. So for the education sector, I think um, uh, we're going to look at mainly the devolved uh, education services like the early childhood training uh, centers, the vocational uh, facilities. These are mainly devolved uh, functions in the Kenyan context. Then, of course, uh, you'll be interested in knowing uh, where these education facilities are, uh, if there's budget that has been allocated to the different facilities in the different uh, financial years, that will also be important. Resource inventory, just getting to know, do we have enough um, teachers in these facilities? Do we have enough uh, classrooms and so on and so forth? So that information is actually very, very important. Then, of course, we have the health services module, and I think this is a very important module given that uh, we've all been affected by COVID in the last three months. So uh, the health department will be interested in knowing uh, where their facilities are, the level of the facilities in the different um, in the different administrative units, and also um, whether these facilities have enough personnel, medical personnel, personnel, whether these facilities have enough equipment, x-ray facilities, and so on and so forth, mother to child and so on. And then also in terms of resource allocation, if there are any resources that have been uh, allocated to these facilities, then you can actually be able to have uh, the details. So that's the health services module. So those are some of the modules that have I have highlighted, but you can have as many other modules as possible depending on the on the workflows and functions of, of a county government. 
so the next bit i'm gonna take us through um a demonstration just to show what we've been talking about how you can be able to publish your your data set structures online if you're working with a, or on the cloud or how you can be able to publish your data sets to an enterprise portal and uh, just to show us some of the modules that we actually have so we're going to go through a shorter demonstration let me just share my screen again So uh, for this demonstration, I'm mainly going to use ArcGIS Online, but as I mentioned, this solution can be deployed uh, on the cloud, that's on ArcGIS Online or on uh, Enterprise. So for this demonstration, I'm mainly going to use uh, ArcGIS Online. So for you to access ArcGIS Online, simply go to ArcGIS.com and then you will be prompted to sign in. There will be an option here to sign in, then sign in with your organizational uh, credentials, a username and your password, then you will be able to access this account. Yeah, so you actually be asked to log in. So when you log in, so this is the organizational account that we have. So this is the home page. So for this uh, solution prototype, we mainly used the county government of, of Nakuru. So this is the home page indicating this is the integrated re resource and revenue management system. And then uh, you can be able to customize the home page uh, based on what you want as an organization, have your organization logo, use your organization uh, corporate colors and have a description about your organization and so on and so forth. So you can actually customize the home page depending on what you want as an organization. Then we have the different departments within your organization appearing here. For instance, we have environment and water resources department, education, ICT, health services, agriculture, we have the various departments, lands, housing, finance, project management, and so on and so forth. So you can have all the departments within uh, within the within your organization appearing here. So notice that uh, these departments will actually be put in 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 form of groups within your organization. So we will create different groups for different uh, uh, departments within your organization. So uh, if, for, for instance, you're from the Department of Water, you will have a group called Water, a department, uh, a group called Water, which reflects, uh, which is mainly a department within the local government. Say we have another department on agriculture, livestock and fisheries. So the thing is, you can be able to invite specific uh, people. Let me just take uh, one example. So like this one here, when you publish content to a particular group, so this content, for instance, has been published to this department uh, here or this group here. So only members who are, who only people who are members within that group can be able to see that information uh, unless you actually choose to share that information with um, with other members within your organization. So this is a, also a very good way of rest. Then we have um, then we have still we have on the organization setting the administrator can be able to add different uh, different members to the organization and we have different roles so like we have the administrator role. And then we have different roles that can be given to different uh, people within your within your organization. So, for instance, uh, if you need uh, maybe you, you have people who, who just want to be that data editors, you can be able to give them that role. Mobile workers, especially for staff that you need to collect data in the field, and maybe that information is published directly to just online or to your enterprise portal. That is possible. Uh, we have publishers and we have viewers. So maybe if there are members within the organization whose uh, main role is to just, you know, view what has been prepared or published with no editing rights, then you can give these roles. So this ensures that um, this guarantees security of information that is actually published to this uh, to this account. Huh? So depending on 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 the policies of your organization, you can assign different roles to different people within within your organization. So the first um, the first module that we have is the population information module. So we have different um, 
we have different uh, modules within population. So the first one is mainly to show uh, the population by age group at, at ward level for different wards. So you're actually able to see spatially this age group. This is the uh, distribution of the population in the different wards. So you can be able to see um, uh, the uh, the age group that is mostly the, the, the major age group or the least age group within a particular administrative unit. So it's important that when you're, you'll be allocating resources, you'll actually know where to allocate uh, uh, different resources depending on, on, on that information. Then we have also uh, maps showing mainly the population densities and the poverty rates. So just comparing uh, if there's any relationship between the population densities and the poverty rates, then you can actually be able to see this even up to what level, be able to see this information up to what level. So again, this is important when you will be allocating resources just to know um, what's the poverty rate in this particular ward. For example, this is Kia Minor. This, that's the poverty rate. That's the po total population of male, total population of female, and so on and so forth. So that's for population. Then we also have the uh, natural resources module. So you'll be able to see all the resources that you have within your local, uh, your local government. And the beauty with these modules is that they are highly interactive you can click on a specific module you're able to see the details like this is um you can be able to see the details of uh, of these um reservoir here you can be able to see the capacity you can be able to see the material that it was built with and any other attribute information so when you come here you're able to see the information summary so in terms of what are the resources that we have and their and their numbers so like you can be able to see the number of dams that we have within this area the number of reservoirs the number of lakes forests and so on and so forth and if you click on any of these you're able to see that information on the map and then you're able to query your information so for instance this is the natural resources department or the environment department and you want to know the capacity of the dams or reservoirs that you have within your within your local um, local government or county government. So for this query, I just did a simple query just to query uh, to see the dams that have a capacity of less than 15,000 liters. So when you run this query on the map, you'll actually be able to see, yes, on the map, you're actually able to see the dams that actually meet that particular criteria. So that's one example of a query that you can run. Then maybe you want to see um, uh, which of the resources or services are need repair or, under, or are under repair and so on and so forth. So again, I just did a, a, a short query just showing the, the dams that are currently under repair, meaning that they are not in use or they need to be repaired. So you can actually query that and be able to see that information on the map. So again, uh, in case you need to share this information with um, with maybe other stakeholders within the local government, maybe you need to have a, a hard copy of this map printed. There's also an option to print here. So you can simply come here print your map in PDF and uh, specify the paper size and then you're able to share this information with um, with the different uh, stakeholders in hard copy. Then there's also an option of sharing this information is in soft copy. Maybe you need to share this uh, web application on, on email or embed it onto your website, then this is actually possible. So that's the natural resources module. Then we have the land information management uh, module. So as I mentioned, you're able to have details about all your land parcels as a local government. So you can be able to see, like if I click on a particular parcel, I'm actually I'm actually able to see information about that parcel. And then you can be able to see uh, the summary of information of all the land parcels. So you can actually be able to see the total number of parcels that you have within your your local uh, government or your county or your municipality. So maybe you can have uh, which are the registered parcels or which are the unregistered parcels or, or depending on the ownership, which is which are the which are the land parcels on lease, which are the land parcels that are under community ownership and so on and so forth. Then you can actually be able to see the different land uses for the different uh, parcels. You can be able to get this information. You can get that, uh, you can be able to see majority of the uses for this particular land. Then you can be able to see whether that corresponds to your land user zoning map, that you, your land use zoning plan that you've prepared. Then you can query information from, from this land information management module. So for instance here, this is also for demonstration purposes. I'm just querying information about parcel number 303 of block 16 in Nakuru. So when I run this query, it should actually be able to, yeah, it actually zooms to that particular particular area where we have uh, where we have the information. And then I can be able to see the particular information about that, uh, that land parcel. I can be able to see the LR number, the amount that they need to pay in terms of um, land rates, the land value, 
the area, the size of that particular land parcel, and so on and so forth. So maybe you also need to query, maybe as a local government, you just want to see how much, uh, which of the parcels owe you maybe um, need to pay land rates that are beyond uh, this amount of money. So you can query and be able to see the, the particular la land rates, uh, the particular parcels that actually need to pay a certain amount of, of land rates. So you can actually be able to see the ones that are color coded in red. So meaning that uh, they meet that particular criteria that you have queried that information with. So again, what I need to emphasize is that you can have as you can get as much information from your land information module depending on what what you have. So this is actually very good information for decision making. So for instance, if we queried and we want to see how many people need to pay land rates and we can actually see the LR numbers and where these numbers are on the map, then if you need people to you know follow up on these, then you can actually send your people to follow up on these and you actually have have the details. So this is really, really important. Yes, then the other bit that I mentioned is the um, is the need to have a seamless uh, development approval. So mean, this is mainly for for development control within lo within local government. So the details that you can see here I picked from the PPA form, mainly the form um, that is usually applied when you're seeking for development permission. So um, I think at for most of our, our local government, apart from the counties that I had mentioned that have an e-permitting e platform, most of the other uh, local governments, you actually have to physically walk to a particular office where you need uh, different services, fill in um, a hard copy form, uh, submit it to them, and then wait for feedback, which means that you also have to go back for feedback. So for instance, when you're seeking development permission, <laughs> so we have um, something that you can be able to Something that you can be able to use. Part of this solution is this um, is this form here. So you can be able to you can be able to click on that particular parcel or actually fill in the parcel details, and that information is auto filled here. And then you're able to fill in your information as as an individual. So for example, we have uh, maybe Andrew Mutuku wants to seek uh, development permission from the county government of Nakuru, maybe PO Box 345 Nakuru. And uh, for the email address, I'm just going to put in my email address because what happens is that after seeking development permission, you will get a notification on email that your your application has been approved or deferred or rejected. So for this demonstration, we are mainly using email, but uh, it's also possible to have people notified on on message that their application has been approved. So whichever works, but for this demonstration, I mainly used a, an email notification. Then you're able to choose the type of application here. So maybe if, you, if you're if seeking uh, approval for change of user, renewal of use, or building development subdivision or am, 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 amalgamation, you can be able to choose that. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use a uh, building development. Then you can have your attachments. You can attach your drawings, your uh, architectural drawings. You can attach ownership uh, documents and so on and so forth. So simply come here, choose the file. And then um, once you're done attaching, you can do the upload, then I say yes, I'm sure I want to submit. Then this information will actually be sent in. So it tells you results sent in and plans attached successfully. So once you do this, so this is the application that is going to be used by members of, of the public, mainly seeking development um, approval. Then uh, on the county side now, they'll have um, a dashboard that actually shows uh, all the applications that have been received to that particular local government. Let me just refresh this to be sure that it's captured what we just, uh, the application that we just made. Let's give it a few minutes. Yes, so we have, yes, so the, the number of applications have changed. So we have the latest application that was done by Andrew Mutuku for block number this, indicating um, that they, they are seeking permission for building development within the county government of Nakuru. So you, you, the county government or the local um, authority or the municipality will be able to see all the application details, all the details, all the applications that have been submitted to the county here. Then uh, they can be able to see in terms of development approval status, what percentage of all the applications that have been submitted have been approved. So for instance, we have 57% being approved, 28% uh, being rejected, 14% being deferred. So maybe for instance, for the ones that have been rejected, the, the local government can look at, maybe people do not understand uh, what is required of them when they're submitting the approval. So they can maybe um, have this information available to members of the public and so on and so forth. And then depending on the types of applications that have been done, 
So for the county government of Nakuru for this demonstration, 50% of all the types of application are actually for building development. Then we have 21% being for change of user subdivisions at, at uh, 14% and so on and so forth. So you can actually be able to see this on the dashboard depending on uh, on the type of applications that have been done to the county. And then also uh, seeing this depending on the types of uh, land use categories of the land parcels that we have and so on and so forth. So of course there will be internal processes by the by the by the local government, by the county governments. There will be circulations to the different uh, uh, offices before approval is actually done. So once the circulation has been done, then uh, the, the person seeking uh, development permission from the local government is then notified via email that your plan has been approved, your plan has been deferred, or your your plan has been um, rejected depending on depending on what you have. So I'm going to pick the details of the last applicant that we have here. So I'm just going to pick the LR number because that's the unique identifier. Then I'm going to paste it here. Yes. Yes. So so you, when they are when they are now giving feedback to to whoever had sought development permission, they'll simply come here and search by the LR number. Then they'll be able to see the details of that particular person. So, for instance, Andrew Mutuku sought an application for building development within this county. So maybe after after the circulation, then maybe his plan has been approved, uh, deferred, or. De declined so maybe for this case say this has been approved so maybe the comment will be your application is approved you can commence development or something so uh, depending Depending on, on the status, if it was deferred, you can defy it and give conditions for defying. Maybe you need to do this and that before your application can be can be approved. If it's rejected, you also give or declined, you can also give reasons for that. So once you submit this, the owner will actually be able to get um, a notification on their email address that your plan has been has been approved so they can go ahead and and um, uh, commence development and so on and so forth. So uh, depending on, uh, so for this demonstration, we mainly used a uh, email notification, but if you want uh, people to be notified by SMS, that is also possible. So that's, that's, that will be a very good way of ensuring that we have seamless um, development control processes. So it's taking a while, but we'll be back just to see the notification that we get once that is approved. Then uh, we have the, the revenue management module. So this module en enables uh, the county government to actually be able to see the total revenues that they have. So this is this only captures land rates that they have uh, in terms of land rates that have been paid. You can be able to see the rates payable. So this is what the county should actually have if everyone pays rates. You can be able to see the amount that has been paid. You can be able to see the amount that you have in arrears, and then you can be able to see the, the total number of parcels for which you are expecting payment for land rates for so uh this dashboard will mainly be the the, um, the local government's uh, interface so this will be used by the by the local government so they can be able to see all these figures then on my left we have um, the payment option so we when we finally deploy these the payment options will be um, an application mainly for members of the public to be able to pay for the different services within the within the local government so uh, for this case, I'm just going to pick a land parcel and assume that I'm going to pay um, I'm going to pay uh, rates for my parcel. So for this demonstration, again, I'm just going to demonstrate using a uh, M-Pesa option. But all these options are actually viable. You can be able to pay rates using your Visa card, your Mastercard, and any other payment option. So the beauty with this uh, with this solution is that uh, Actris is actually integrated with the different uh, APIs that you have. So you can actually be able to pay um, to have different payment options. So I'm going to put in my my information here just to demonstrate how this works. Then I'm going to indicate the amount of money that I'm paying to to the county government of Nakuru for land rates, then have my email address. So when I click on pay rates, I will get a notification on my mobile phone that I actually need to pay land rates to the county government of Nakuru. So let me just click pay rates and I'll come here and leave an M-Pesa. So it's going to take a while then, but I will get a notification that I need to pay uh, 
rates to to the county government of of Nakuru. So let's give it a few more minutes. Yes, yeah, so I actually, I actually have the prompting here to be able to pay uh, uh, rates to to the county government of Nakuru. So I'm simply putting in my the amount that yes, once that is done, let's just give it a few more minutes. Uh, we can redo that. Let me just. Uh, yes, so here we are. Oh, sorry. I think I should have just been a bit patient. Let's let's redo that. So I pick the parcel number, the parcel that I'm going to pay land rates, then the same process, put in my. And the amount that I'm going to pay, then I put in my email address. And I come here, pay rates, then Lipa and Pesa. So we'll give it a few more minutes. Uh, so let's give it a few more minutes. I think it's taking a while, but I think the first the first uh, the first transaction was actually executed. Let me just go to my my email and just show you what we have. So when you when you pay for for rates, you're actually supposed to get an a receipt on email that you've actually paid uh, that you've actually paid land rates for for that particular uh, land parcel, and then the the values for the amounts that are paid will actually change here. So I'm just gonna open my email address and show us the the receipt that we have after paying uh, after paying rates. So let me just reshare my screen. So this is what you actually get after paying rates. You get a notification on email that you have paid uh, that amount of money for LR number this, and you get the receipt on on email. So this is a very good way of ensuring that um, the county can actually be able to monitor progress of payment of, uh, of of land rates and any other revenue streams from from the county. Then the other module that we have is the project management module. So this with this module, you're able to see all the projects that are taking place within the different uh, administrative units in the county. Again, it's very interactive. You can be able to click on a specific project, see the details of that particular project, the type of project, whether it's a long term, short term, amount of money that was allocated to that project, the description of the project, how much that project is, uh, how long that project is expected to take, if it's one year, two years, and so on and so forth. And then you can be able to see uh, the project categories, the different categories of projects that are actually being uh, carried out within your within your local government. You can be able to see the amount of money that has been spent totally for all the projects. You can be able to see the project status, what percentage are new projects, what percentage are completed projects, ongoing projects, stalled projects, and so on and so forth. You can actually be able to query and filter this information. So maybe we just want to see uh, the projects that are being done in Nakuru East. So simply come here, 
and then uh, you'll be able to see only uh, project information about uh, uh, projects in, in Nakuru East. So for instance, we have two projects. The categories of these projects are mainly roads and market projects. They are all new projects. And this is the amount of money that has been spent on this particular project. So you can also come back and query maybe um, by a particular date. Maybe you want to see what project do you have by this, by this date this year. You can actually be able to query that information. So I can come here and query information. Maybe I want to see by 2019, maybe um, June, what, what projects did we have? What's the project information that we have? So you can actually be able to see that has changed on my dashboard showing the number of projects that we had as at that time and the amount that was spent. So it, you can be able to run as many queries as possible. And the other module that we have is the education services module. So again, you can be able to see all the education facilities, if they're ECD centers, if they're vocational training institutions, you can be able to see all that information. Uh, maybe let me just add uh, vocational uh, institutions. So you can actually be able to see all that information on your map. You can be able to see the status of, of, uh, of the institutions, which are public institution, private institution. You can be able to see the funds allocated to each of the institution. Then you can be able to see specific information about specific institutions. So maybe, for example, we just want to see what's the pupil teacher ratio in this particular institution and so on and so forth. So you can have as much information as uh, as possible. So I think that uh, marks the end of, of my presentation, just to show us the kind of modules that you can be able to be able to have. And um, so as I mentioned, this can be deployed uh, county wide, like for the whole county, or if you are a specific department within a local government and you are interested in a specific module that is also that's also possible that can be deployed for for the specific um, county department. And then um, it can also be deployed on, on premise or on access online on the cloud. So depending on what you prefer as an organization. So um, that marks the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for finding time to join us for today's webinar. We've been looking at the e-commerce solution for local government. We are looking forward to working with you in, the, in implementing this solution in the various local governments and actually ensuring that you improve delivery of services to the citizens within your, your local government.